All right, this is biology lesson 5.07 on crossing over. Um, and uh, this goes back to the previous page. Let me just pull that page out. <clears throat> Lay that under the camera. So we're talking about what's going on right here when the chromosomes line up side by side. So this is a process. Let's uh, let's start with blue. So crossing over. Um, let's say this is uh, number one, and let's do some notes underneath this. This takes place. During metaphase. Of meiosis one. Instead of lining up um, on top of each other, like happens in mitosis, the uh, homologous chromosomes line up side by side. The homologous chromosomes line up side by side. Now, we did those in a pink highlighter and in a blue highlighter. So I'm going to stick with that. So I've got blue. <clears throat> and I've got pink. And let's put a central mirror between. <clears throat> and when they do this, when they're lined up like this, we call this a tetrad, T-E-T-R-A-D. So uh, tetra means four, and I have two chromosomes, and they're homologous, but I have four chromatids, one, two, three, four chromatids. So let's just uh, add that. It's always good to reinforce that. Two chromosomes. We have four chromatids. And what happens while they're lined up side by side? So let's try to zoom in. So I'm going to circle this. And let's let's just zoom in on that portion. What we would see is that they cross. So this is the the, the end of this, and the other side of this. You see, that doesn't do a very good job of making it look like it's expanded. Uh, I better just draw out the whole thing. So while they're in tetrad, we get here overlap. And where the chromosomes are overlapping, they break off and reconnect. So that when they're done, what I'm going to have is this. So they break off and reconnect and they swap genetic information. So just to go through that again, um, I'm going to take this out. This, this didn't really fly, I'm trying to expand it. We start off and the homologous chromosomes line up side by side. The uh, edges of them at the uh, inside edge, they overlap, they crisscross, hence crossing over, and then they break off and reconnect. And you end up with uh, this homologous chromosome has a piece of this and this homologous chromosome has a piece of that. Well, why is this such a big deal? Remember in mitosis, everything is um, an exact copy, but the switch, switching genetic information, leads to something called variation. If you make, um, so it's the difference between if you took a, a page from a textbook and you made a photocopy, 
But now let's say you take two pages from the textbook and you cut a paragraph out of each and paste it onto the other page. Now the page says something completely different. We varied the content of the note of the textbook page. Um, without variation, an organism can't change. So if we didn't have variation, you would look at it like an exact copy of your mom who would look like an exact copy of her mom and you know, so on and so forth. Uh, variation, the reason this is so important is that variation allows an organism to change. It allows an organism to change through natural selection first. and then evolution. So what happens is variation and change come first. Variation and change drive natural selection and natural selection drives evolution. There's only a few points where we actually can introduce variation. And this is the first source. So there's, I think, two, maybe three, depends how you look at it, uh, ways that we can talk about variation in eukaryotes. And this is in eukaryotes. This only happens in eukaryotes. So the last video, we're going to talk about what happens in prokaryotes with bacteria. Um, and if we didn't have variation, we wouldn't have natural selection, we wouldn't have evolution. Um, and it would be really difficult for uh, species, all it would take, so for example, right now, uh, corals are dying very, very quickly because the ocean's getting warmer due to climate change. The species of coral that have changed and can withstand warmer temperatures are the ones that are going to survive. And over time, all the corals will become uh, corals that can withstand warmer temperatures. Now we're gonna lose a lot of the coral first because a lot of the regular corals will die off. But because the corals can change by swapping genetic information, um, the ones that are better suited to their environment that have changed, they're better suited to their environment will live. And over time, not just one or two of them will live, but they'll all live because the entire uh, range of all the corals will evolve to be more comfortable in warmer water. So we really can't emphasize um, crossing over and the importance of crossing over enough uh, to show that um, this is where we're going to get our, our change. So, and that's, again, that's in meiosis, uh, and that is in eukaryotes. So let's take a look in the next video on uh, how prokaryotes do this.